Hi, I'm Mike Mead. I'm a self-taught 3D print expert for the Digit ME program here in Burnley. And I'm going to talk to you about making movable 3D printed parts for the 3D Print Cup Masterclass. So this Masterclass is going to talk you through making movable parts for your characters. I urge you to use resources such as the Thingiverse website. But basically what we're going to do is show you a number of techniques for pieces that can all be produced in one single print. Movable pieces we can design in a few different ways. And this is our first one. This is what we call a single print design. So this will be one piece on one print. Um, it's the basic interlocking rings, so nothing too complicated about it. All we've designed is three rings interlocked within each other. What we need to consider when we're doing these movable parts is that we need to make sure that we have enough distance between each of the single entities that we can remove our support material and that we don't fuse the two pieces together. So what we'll do, the design that I've done, I'm just going to measure the distance between the pieces and the initial distance between the two there is 7.32 millimetres. Ample distance. You will get enough support material in there that you can comfortably remove it and you've no danger of fusing them together. The closer distance, the one in the middle between the two outside rings, obviously is a closer distance so we'll measure that and you can see that that is 1.21 millimetres. Again, ample distance. You won't fuse the two pieces together. It may be a little trickier to get your support material out. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Anything less than about 0.75, your pieces will join. They'll fuse and you won't have any movement from them. So, following on from our design, we've got our three interlock rings. We've removed all the support material and we can see that we've got good flexibility. We've not fused the parts together, so our tolerance was okay. And we've got a nice moving piece that was done in one single print. So we're going to look at our second part, second moving piece that we can integrate into our design. Uh, it's a basic hinge, a flat hinge. This is assembled in three separate pieces. They can all be done in one print, but they're three separate parts that are assembled afterwards. Uh, hopefully we will manage not to fuse the three together if they're separate pieces. So we've got the first half of our hinge. If we then bring in the second half of our hinge, notice two separate pieces and they wouldn't move very well without something to join them together. So we'll add in a pin through the top. So that pin you can see runs right through to the end. And what we end up with is a hinge that we can move up and down. Notice that there's still some tolerance in there. There's still a gap running around the outside. If we had nil tolerance, you wouldn't be able to get the pin through the hinges. So make sure you leave enough. And because we're working in 3D print, there is a tolerance of 0.2 of a millimeter. Okay, so in the design stage, I showed you a three part hinge, two leaves and a pin down the center. I'm now going to show you two alternatives. We could do an enclosed hinge in our print. So we've got a door like this with our enclosed hinge in here. Now I've broken this one open to show you how to do it in the design. So you'll see that each piece has a socket at the lower half and at the top. And the door itself has a pin that goes with it. Simply put, that door will hinge on there, but we can do it as one single print. All you do to remove the support material is flex the piece until the support breaks away. The alternative hinge is one done in two parts. So this is a dimple hinge, namely so because it has a dimple on one side. We match that up to its reverse, the dome on the other, and simply flex the two together. We've got enough tolerance there that we can maneuver the piece. We're not looking for an engineering fit, just simply movement in the character. So that's a nice, easy print. Two parts pushed together. So this is the basis of a nut and bolt. Okay, we can change the theory behind it, so we can change the outsides and make it part of our model as we have done with previous 
uh, movement pieces. But we've got our basic spiraled nut and bolt thread. Obviously, we need to make sure we set our tolerance right so that the nut fits over. Um, and we've got various bits for that. So we'll show you the other half of it. And again, we could change the outside to make it part of our model. We can change the length, the diameter, the depth, the height. Just keep the basic principles the same and always remember your tolerances between the two. So here it is in action. Our threaded piece as designed on screen and its corresponding mate with a thread down the inside. Simple process then of just screwing the two pieces together. Again, keeping it simple, nothing complicated and you can build your design around the piece. So we're going to look at our next moving part, which would be a ball and socket joint. So we've made our first section, which is the ball piece, with a single section on the bottom to join it onto our model. And we're going to add in the socket piece, which sits over the top. This is a model to give great consideration to your tolerances and your support removal for. Um, we'll move it into its two separate pieces. So we've got our ball and our socket. And as you can see, they have to fit quite snugly to go together. But the thing is, we've got to be able to remove the support material that the printer is going to fill the gap with. If we can't do that, we won't be able to move it around. The only way to remove the support from a ball and socket because of where it's going to be, all your support material is going to be on the inside, is to manipulate it with the two arms that are joining it to your model. If you make the arms too small or too thin, they'll break off before the support material will and you won't be able to make them move. So we'll join those back together. So let's see some of those parts in action. We've printed out the arms, which are a ball and socket joint. We can see that on each piece, there's a hollow underneath and a ball at the top. Note the grooves in the side to allow the plastic to flex. And it's simply given enough tolerance that we can use the material to flex and just close in on itself. Simply push the pieces together. And what we end up with is a movable and flexible part that even though it's in multiple pieces, was still printed from one single STL file. So I've been speaking about tolerances and keeping the gaps between parts so that you can get support out. Here you can see that we've got what is the basis for an axle. So we've got two pieces and an axle down the middle with a gap around each one. So we've kept that and I just want to show you how we can make that principle into a model. So we'll take that axle and we'll build it into our model van. So you can see there, basic van shape. And all we've done is we've taken that axle and added two pieces to the end of it. If I change that to be a transparent, you'll see there that we've got our axle running right through the middle. Something to consider if you were doing something like that is how are you going to get the support out from that middle piece? How are you going to get all that excess plastic to keep that moving? And that's it. Those are some examples of making movable pieces on a 3D printer. The key thing, keep it simple. Two interlocking pieces pushed together, still a movable part. <laughs>